Hey, Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be doing is looking at the basics of how to read tab or tablature for guitar. So, the one thing I want to say about this before we get started is that tablature, learning how to read tab, if you've never read this before, is a really great way of being able to get right to songs. You know, learning how to play, you know, whatever the, the case may be. I always found it inspiring and motivating when I was younger to be able to play the songs that I loved, even if it wasn't the entire song, if it was just a riff out of a song or something like that. And um, learning how to read tab can, can get you there very quickly. Now, I do want to say this, though. Learning how to read tablature is not a substitute for learning how to read something like standard notation or learning the notes on your guitar, things like that. Depending on your journey, your guitar journey, those might be really important things to you or for what you're, you know, aspiring to do with the guitar. It's not my job to say you should or shouldn't do any of these things. I'm just offering you the opportunity, if you've never read Tab before, to give it a try. And um, maybe learning some of these riffs and things like that could really help you in just getting motivated. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out. All right, so let's bring up our first example of Tab or Tablature. I'm going to refer to it as Tab. Now, what you see here is that Tab, unlike standard notation, the every good boy does fine kind of thing, tablature has six lines instead of five. Okay, don't worry about the numbers and things. We'll get to that in just a second. So the six lines are representing, directly representing the six strings. Okay, so you're looking at your guitar literally kind of like this in front of you. Okay, the sixth string, which is your thickest string, is on the bottom. And the first string, which is your thinnest string, is on the top. So it's like you're looking at the guitar like this. Okay? Now, why do they do it that way? I always explain to people what I think is, or an easy way to, to, to think of this is, is if you read standard notation, and if you don't, it's okay. But at some point in your life, you probably learned like every good boy does fine, that sort of thing. Um, and if you're learning those, the, the lower notes are on the bottom of the staff and the higher notes are on the top. So if we kind of think of it like that, we can think, well, that's why notation, or, or excuse me, tablature is written like that, because the low notes are on the bottom from this string, and the high notes are on the top. So you're, you're just going to read from left to right. Now, if we look at that tab that I've got in front of me, um, in front of you on your screen there as well, the first thing we see on the left-hand side is it says E, A, D, G, B, and E. Those are the strings. So E is your sixth string. This is your low string. The A is your fifth string, the D is your fourth string, the G is your third string, B is your second string, and E is your first string. Now you won't always see that written on there, you just have to get used to the fact that when you look at that tab staff, the bottom is your E string, the low E string, and the top is your high E string, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to do is look at that first measure, and in that first measure I just put a three in there. Now what that three is telling you is you're going to play the third fret on the sixth string. That's it. Okay. What this particular tab is not showing you is it's not showing you quarter notes. It's not showing you eighth notes. It's not showing you which fingers to use. Okay. And I did that on purpose just to show you the, the bare essentials of what tab is. So all you're seeing is a three. That three means you're going to play the third fret of the sixth string. That's what you're going to play. Third fret of the sixth string. Okay. It's not telling you what finger to use. It's not telling you how long to play it. It's just telling you to play a three. Okay. Now, sometimes tab will tell you it might have some notation written there for you to look at or something like that. But oftentimes tab will just, you'll just go by ear. You'll just listen to it. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Now, if we look at the second measure, the second measure shows us a three and a five, and they're both written on the sixth string. So that means we would want to play a three and a five. We're going to play both of those. Now, if I was actually doing this in a song, it probably would be a lot of work to try and play three and five with my first finger all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this general logic, which is I have four fingers that can cover four frets. Now, if you've never done this before, you've never played single notes, it can be kind of awkward on your wrist and all that sort of thing to get comfortable in this position because when you play chords, oftentimes your elbow's kind of out this way. But when you play single notes, sometimes your elbow will have to move in this way so your pinky can reach. So the general idea is, is that you have four fingers that can cover a, a group of four frets. 
sometimes we can cover even more, but let's just start with that basic idea. So if I was thinking of it, if I wanted to play third fret and fifth fret, I'm probably going to play my first finger and my third finger. If I wanted three to four, I'd probably use these fingers. If I wanted three to six, I'd probably use these fingers. Now, you might be different. Some people don't use their pinky much at all. They just use their, their these three fingers for everything. And that's okay. It's not That's not what this video is about. But I want you to start thinking logically. As you look at that measure and you see that three and that five, the first thing you do is start visualizing that it's on the sixth string, third fret, fifth fret. And the second thing you start visualizing is what fingers are you probably going to use? Now again, you might be different than me, but I would use my first and my third. So I'd play the three, and then I'd play the five. Now the tab's not telling me how fast to play it, how long to play them, it's just telling me to play those. And that's okay for now, okay? Now the other nice thing is, is if I play this three and then I play this five, I don't have to move my first finger to play the five. Because if I put a new finger down, notice how the fingers behind the, the closest finger to the, um, the body of the guitar is the one that's going to make the sound. So when I go to play that three, I don't have to take this finger off. I can just leave it there. Okay. So that's that situation. Now let's move to the third measure. Now the third measure shows us playing three, five, and six. Now again, they're all written on the sixth string, trying to keep this really easy. So I would think third fret, fifth fret, sixth fret, right? Three, five, six. That's what I'm visualizing in my head. And for me, I would also think what fingers am I going to use? I'm going to use one, three, and four. Now again, you might use something else, but that's what I'd be thinking in my head. Now, the actual application of what we're doing right now might take time if you've never done this before. So I'm not trying to rush you through, you know, fingers and all that sort of thing and trying to get used to this position. And that's a whole nother conversation, but I want you to understand how it works. So reading is part one. Understanding application of fingers is part two of this, okay? So in that case, I'd be playing three, five, six. Okay? Now the next measure is kind of different. The next measure we see a chord written on there. You see there's all these notes all written together. That means we're going to play them all together. So if we look at that chord, we see we've got a three on the sixth string, a two on the fifth string, and then zeros on the fourth, third, and second strings. Now zeros would be these. I'm not playing anything, I'm just playing the strings open. So you can think of the zeros as being O's as well if you want to, but they're open, okay? And then it's ending with a three again. So if I build this and play it all together, and again, you might not see it yet, but you will with more practice. I've got a three, a two, and then zero, 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 and then I need a three down here. And that chord would be G. Now you're not always gonna know what chord it is, but you know if they're stacked on top of each other that they're supposed to be played together. So that's how you'd visualize chords when you're reading tab as well, okay? So let's go to the next picture here. Now the next one, what we see is we've got zero, zero, four, two, zero and then zero, zero, four, two, zero. Now let's just look at that. So we, we repeat the same thing twice. We can see that right there. And you'll notice there's some space in between. So we play zero, zero, four, two, zero. We've got some space there and then zero, zero, four, two, zero. So the first thing I try and do in my head is I try and visualize that on my guitar and then decide what fingers would work best. Now, if I see a four and a two, doesn't matter what order, if I see a four and a two, the first thing I think is I'm probably gonna use this and this, my first finger and third finger because these two would work great for one, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five, seven, whatever the case may be, right? Again, general idea. It doesn't always work, but it's a great place to start. So as I'm looking at that zero, zero, four, two, zero, what I'm thinking is I'm going to play zero, zero, four on this sixth string. So the four would be done with my third finger, so the two can be done with my first finger. You know, I... I mean, I suppose I could do them upside down, but that's not really what I'm looking for, right? So I've got zero, zero, four, and then I've got a two, but that's written on the fifth string. Do you see that? 
And then I've got a zero, but that's written on the fourth string. Now that might sound familiar to you. Now again, don't worry about how fast you can play it, but you notice how your ear kicks in. If you've ever heard that melody before, okay, you're going, hey, I know what that song is. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about the song though because I want to make sure this video actually can stay on YouTube without getting shut down or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to just gonna leave it at that. Okay, you can talk about it in the comments. Somebody could certainly throw in the title of it. I would sure appreciate that. So we've got, we play that twice. We can see on the tab, we play the same thing twice. Now it's not telling us what the rhythm's going to be, but if we're familiar with the song, which it's always great to start with songs that you know when you learn them, or at least something you could listen to, which nowadays is pretty easy to do. You can go on YouTube or Spotify or iTunes or God knows what it is and listen to, you know, the beginning of a song that you want to learn or whatever it might be. So I'm listening to this. And again, don't worry about how fast I'm playing it. Then we get to the third part of this, which says 00420, just like before. But then we've got this tag at the end, which is 420 on the fourth string. So it says at the end, I got to play four, two, zero on the fourth string. You see that? Okay. So that's how we start. Now, I might not learn this entire song. Maybe I will, right? But maybe I'm just going to learn this because it's fun and it inspires me. It reminds me of the reason I started playing guitar in the first place was to play songs that I enjoy. Now, you might not enjoy this song, but you will find something that you, you do want to play. And the beauty of Tab is, is now all of a sudden we're playing this iconic tune, and it didn't take us three years of studying, you know, notation and all these other things. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not making light of that. I think those things are incredibly important. But I'd rather have you playing something like this today and getting excited about it, and then somebody hears you play and goes, wow, that's really cool. You know, you just played whatever the song is, right? And you're inspired, and you're motivated, and you want to keep playing. And then when it comes time to learn whatever the next thing is, you know, learning how to read music, or learning the notes on your guitar, or learning scales, or whatever it might be, that's cool. You can, you can move in there, but at least you've got this knowledge and this power to have some fun playing some music, okay? So let's look at the next and last example, and then I'll let you get going here. Okay, so here we've got zero, three, four, two, two, zero, and then two, four, two, zero, two. Now that's a lot to take in. So let's just start at the three, four, two. Zeros are free. We don't have to push on those. So zeros are three. So I see three, four, two, two. So immediately I got to start thinking, well, what fingers am I going to use to push on a two, a three, and a four in whatever order? Well, for me, that makes sense right here. I could use this for the two, this for the three, and this for the four. And if there's two twos, I might use this same finger for both of those twos. I don't know, I gotta figure it out, okay? So this one, we see there's a zero, and then there's a little space, so we're gonna pause there. And then we've got three, four, which I'm gonna use my middle finger and my third finger for the three, four, because I want this one available for those twos. And then we got a two, and a two, and then a zero. actually press on both those twos at the same time kind of like a chord right might be easier for me I don't know I gotta I gotta work this out okay now this is a Beatles thing if you're familiar with this and then I've got a two four well again I go back to my logic that means first finger third finger so I'm gonna play two on the fifth string and four on the fourth string Two, two on the fifth string, zero, two on the fourth string. And there you go.
you go. You start putting it together. Now, I know I'm kind of rushing through this if this is new for you, but you can watch the video, you can pause it, you can practice it, all those sorts of things. And then jump over to, you know, somewhere like Ultimate Guitar, uh, you know, on the uh, interwebs, right? And look up some different things and see if you can find something that works well for you. But it's a great way of learning how to play. So do me a great favor. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, share the video with somebody, and please go to guitarzoom.com um, and check out, you know, my guitar courses, check out the club, you know, different things like that. And just, you know, I, I appreciate any support that you give us uh, at Guitar Zoom. So take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you soon.